Well, good morning, everybody. It's a real pleasure to welcome you all here to Linamar for this important announcement about the automotive industry in Ontario. As I'm sure you all know, Linamar has long been a key player in automotive parts supply in Canada. We have 24 plants in Canada, 21 of which are supplying the automotive sector, mainly for passenger cars, the majority of which, by the way, ships south of the border. We have an incredible group of skilled and talented team members here in our Canadian plants, more than 11,000 strong. Our Canadian plants are our most productive globally. They implement the most improvements year after year in a variety of areas from safety to cost to quality and design enhancements. And they do the best job of purchasing of our global plants. We also have the lowest carbon footprint of any of our plants globally in terms of the emissions generated in our Canadian production facilities. So how do we do all that? Because we have an amazing team. We have an amazing team of hardworking, innovative people who work so well together to rapidly and effectively win and launch new business. Today, a quarter of our business wins and growing is for the next generation of vehicle propulsion, electrified vehicles. Fantastic, considering electrified vehicles are less than 5% of the global market. That means we are winning electrified vehicle business at five times the rate of market penetration. And we are really excited about this next chapter in the future of mobility. We're also very grateful to our governments for helping to create a competitive and business environment for our advanced manufacturing facilities here in Canada. The areas of focus of Ontario's auto strategy of creating a competitive business environment by streamlining on the regulatory side, the focus on supporting innovation, and the focus on attracting and, and training talent are exactly what we need to continue to compete and to continue to win. I think Canada also has a huge advantage in terms of a sustainable manufacturing future given the very low level of fossil fuel based energy in our country. 94% of Ontario's electricity grid is clean energy. This gives us a massive advantage over other countries with much higher levels of fossil fuel uh, electricity. The US has less than 40% clean electricity, for instance, compared to our 94%. And this is important and will become of increasing importance in a world that cares more and more about the carbon footprint that we're leaving behind. Canada and Ontario are a great place for advanced manufacturing. We have the skills, we have the innovation, the sustainable energy, and we have the support of our governments. So thanks very much and again, thanks for being with us uh, today. And it's now my pleasure to welcome to the podium the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Well, good morning, everyone, and, and thank you so much, Linda, and what a, what a beautiful uh, facility here at Lenamar and great people. I also want to thank Minister Vic Fideli, who's been working tirelessly with our auto industry partners in the strategies we're announcing today. My friends, in the face of big challenges, our government has a plan for growing a stronger economy, an economy that works for everyone. It's a plan that works our progress in our fight against COVID-19 but also looks beyond to the Ontario we want to build and the future we want for our kids and grandkids. It's a plan that will attract investment to create good jobs in our steel and manufacturing sectors. It's a plan that will unleash the economic potential of our north as we build up homegrown supply chains for electric vehicles and battery manufacturing right here in Ontario. To do so, Ontario needs more skilled workers. That's why our government is expanding job training. It's why we're encouraging more young people to enter the skilled trades, while breaking down barriers that stop hardworking newcomers from finding good jobs because of unfair requirements for in-province experience. To attract and keep these workers, we're also investing in communities with better health care and stronger local infrastructure. That means saying yes to modern hospitals and more ICU capacity. It means saying yes to building long-term care homes as we add thousands of nurses and personal support workers. It also means saying yes to building roads and highways to meet the needs of a growing province. It means saying yes to connecting communities with more public transit. 
Friends, it's all linked. Ontario's economy is a machine. If one part of that machine isn't working to its full potential, it holds us all back. But when Ontario is firing on all cylinders, watch out. There's no other place anyone would rather start a business, work, or raise a family. That's why our government is saying yes to building the next generation of cars right here in Ontario and launching phase two of the driving prosperity. It's our plan to build the vehicles of the future. As we know, motor vehicle manufacturing has been a way of life in Ontario for over 100 years. The auto industry has been a cornerstone, cornerstone for well-paying jobs and allowed world, the world to see the talent of Ontario's workers. Right now, the auto industry is changing as consumers demand a different kind of vehicle technology. And the industry is shifting rapidly and preparing to build the cars of the future. As a government, we must ensure our manufacturing sector keeps pace. For years, we heard from automakers that Ontario had become an expensive jurisdiction in which to do business. Because of the policies put in place by previous governments, jobs flood the province. By 2018, we had become uncompetitive in an industry that was built here in Ontario. Phase one of Driving Prosperity announced in 2019, our government committed to reversing that trend and retaking our number one destination to do business right here in Ontario by lowering taxes, reducing electricity costs, and cutting red tape. We significantly reduced the cost of doing business here in the province to a tune of $7 billion. And the auto industry took notice. We can now say that automakers are investing around $4 billion in electric vehicle investments at their Ontario assembly plants. Ford has solidified their commitment to Ontario by announcing a $1.8 billion investment to produce battery EVs at its Oakville assembly plant. And GM announced it would invest $1 billion in this plant in Ingersoll to produce their Bright Drop EV delivery van. The first all-electric vehicle produced by a mainstream automaker in Canada. And of course, GM also announced a $1.3 billion investment to resume pickup truck production in Oshawa, with the first trucks rolling off the assembly line last week, built by some of Ontario's finest workers. These are just two examples that show, without a doubt, that phase one of the driving prosperity has been a resounding success and today we launch phase two. This phase aims to keep the province's manufacturing at the forefront of an increasingly competitive global arena and helping Ontario's auto sector pivot to producing the automotive technologies of the future, including the next generation of electric vehicles and the batteries those vehicles will rely on. My friends, Ontario is an economic powerhouse we have the supply chain in place, we have the geographic advantages, and we're blessed with the mineral resources to make the batteries that these in-demand new cars will need. In addition, we have the greatest manufacturing workforce anywhere on the planet, ready to put those cars together and get them out on the road. Our government knows it, and the auto industry knows it. Ontario is the number one place in the world to build the cars and trucks of the future. We are the world leading partner in creating the best vehicle force and abundance of clean energy sources. the world We want your business, and there's no better place for it than right here in Ontario. Our province has come so far. We can't afford to go back to the politics of no. Instead, our government is saying yes. Yes to building, yes to investing, and yes to growing. Friends, let's say yes to the better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to Minister Fidelli. Thank you uh, very much, Premier Ford, and thank you to Linda for hosting us here today at Lindemar. Premier Ford, it's uh, so wonderful for you to be here to announce this incredibly exciting and important next phase in the future of Ontario's auto sector. 
In 2019, as you heard, our government announced driving prosperity, and that was our plan to set the foundation for growth in Ontario's innovative auto sector, for its workers, for our families, and for all of the communities that it supports. Today, phase two of that ambitious plan, which we're announcing, underscores our government's continued commitment to building the automotive industry of the future right here in Ontario. Our province has consistently ranked among North America's top auto producing regions for more than two decades. In 2020, despite the pandemic, Ontario was still the number two producer, building 1.36 million vehicles. Vehicle assembly and auto parts production directly support almost 100,000 Ontario jobs and hundreds of thousands of jobs indirectly in communities like we are today right across the province. Phase two of our driving prosperity plan will continue to strengthen our province's innovation capacity, our robust parts supply chain, and capitalize on our highly skilled and talented workforce. The auto industry is being reinvented around electric vehicles, the technologies of the future. And Ontario has exactly what it takes up and down every supply chain to transform our auto sector and ensure that everyone in Ontario benefits from its long-term growth and success. The next phase of driving prosperity will help the sector pivot to manufacturing the electric vehicles of the future and the electric batteries those vehicles need. It's anchored by the objective to maintain and grow Ontario's auto, se auto sector. The plan is looking for 400,000 electric and hybrid vehicles by 2030. We'll partner with the auto sector to achieve four goals. Reposition vehicle and parts production for the car of the future. Establish and support an electric battery supply chain ecosystem. Innovate in every stage of development and we will invest in Ontario's auto workers. Phase two will allow our province to leverage our critical mineral wealth in Ontario's north, supporting a broader supply chain that includes mining and the refining of those minerals required for electric vehicle batteries. And that means good jobs for skilled Ontario workers. Our plan seeks to strengthen the links between these ecosystems, creating a comprehensive world-class supply chain greater than the sum of all of its parts. These commitments will continue to lay the foundation to ensure that Ontario's auto sector is successful, highly competitive, ripe for new investment, and ready to meet the global demand. Through the phase two of our driving prosperity plan, we'll continue to build on our work as a government to accelerate growth and innovation in our auto sector, create those jobs for workers and for those communities. And we will sustain the momentum of new investments the Premier spoke about to ensure that Ontario continues to be a North American leader in developing the vehicle of the future. We're going to shift gears towards new areas of opportunity, electric vehicles, electric battery production, state-of-the-art manufacturing technologies. We're not only going to stay ahead of the curve, we're going to lead that curve. So thank you very much for being here today. We'll now take questions from the media. I'd ask the media to please form a line behind me. And it'll be one question and one follow-up, please. Hi, how are you Hi, doing? Hi, Premier. Um, uh, Ricardo here with uh, CTV Kitchener. Uh, we first wanted to talk about a situation in uh, Cambridge with the MZO. We learned yesterday that there is um, a deadline and a string attached to this, uh, this uh, policy item. Um, we just wanted to ask if your government is prepared to pull that MZO because that deadline is coming up in just two weeks and do you feel that in two weeks there can be any real meaningful consultation to, to meet that requirement that the minister had set out? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, I was briefed on, on this and uh, Minister Clark is in close consultation with the, the, the developer to get the MZO but we have one requirement. Uh, actually, we have a couple of requirements that we get the approval from the, the council and mayor, which I understand we did, but they have to also uh, consult with the indigenous community. And I, I guess that uh, slipped a little bit, but they're, they're gonna be able to hopefully get it, get it done. Uh, so th those are the rules. We don't, we don't uh, build on the green belt. We don't uh, do it without the approval of the, the mayors and city council. And we don't do it without consultation for the indigenous communities. But we, we all work together and we'll, we'll get it done. I'm, I'm pretty confident. 
Um, just the second question, if I can as well. Speaking of Indigenous communities, um, we understand Chief Mark Hill has, uh, has shared his frustration with the process to uh, search grounds and some of the funding there. Um, have you been able to follow up with him and, and have a conversation about the government's plans on that front? Yeah, no, our Minister of Indigenous Affairs have been working with uh, all First Nations communities. Uh, we're leading the pack in Canada. We've put over $20 million of funding towards that. And at any given time, uh, my phone's on. And we, we just have a phenomenal relationship with First Nations communities right across Ontario. And we're gonna do everything we can uh, to support them, give them the technology, give them the funding. Uh, again, uh, we're, we're putting more money than anyone in the entire country uh, into this, and we'll always stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with them to support them in their needs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Premier, I'm Kate, I'm from CBC Kitchener. Hey, Kate, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good. Uh, Premier, soon after you were elected, you appointed a special advisor to Washington to represent Ontario, Ontario's interests on trade. If that post was so important, why is there no one in that right now at such a crucial time for the auto sector? Well, he, he ended up uh, moving on, and, and uh, our minister right here, Vic Fidelli, is aggressively looking for the right person uh, to fill that, that uh, spot. But in the meantime, Minister Fidelli is uh, on the phone, as, as myself is, uh, working with our U.S. partners, we're, we're their number one uh, customer and we had a great conversation, the Premiers of the Prime Minister last night, uh, reinforcing uh, the, the, the clause that the Americans are saying, buy, buy American, well, we're, we're their number one customer. You know, we buy more goods than any other country in the world. If Ontario was a standalone uh, country itself, would be the third largest trading partner, we're the number one trading partner to 19 states, and number two to nine, uh, nine others. We're connected at the hips. So we need to be excluded from that line. I want to, uh, and I told the Prime Minister last night, and all the Premiers feel the same way, we will stand shoulder to shoulder as Team Canada when he goes down to the U.S. to, to meet uh, uh, both Presidents of Mexico and, and the United States. We face the same issue under Donald Trump. And we, we went down there uh, en masse, we talked to the governors, uh, they understand that indirectly we employ 9 million Americans through our, our trade. And we're different than any other uh, jurisdiction in the world. With all due respect to Mexico, with all due respect to China and every other country, there's no better uh, partner, uh, closest allies uh, than Canada. And we should be respected. So we're, we're there, I'll have the Prime Minister's back when he goes down there along with the other Premiers, and we'll do whatever it takes to get excluded from this Buy America. It, it, it's, it's gonna hurt both sides of the border if, if he continues to do this. And as a follow-up, you talked about ways to encourage um, potential employees to come to Ontario, building yes. hospitals and long-term care. But out front of this building, there's a sign that says there's a $1,500 signing bonus, walk-in Wednesdays, which people driving by might think that Linamar is having trouble recruiting talent. Um, and I'm wondering what the government can do right now to help companies that are facing that. Well, really good, good question. That was probably one of the number one topics last night with the Prime Minister. We're all feeling, feeling the crunch uh, right now. And as, as Linda and I and, and Vic were talking before we came in, it's not just skilled workers. It's even un unskilled or skilled. If you're unskilled, we have training programs. I know Linamar, they have training programs. They'll, they'll train them. We just need bodies. We need people from uh, around the world to come here. And what a greatest place in the world to live and raise a family and start a business is Ontario. So folks, you're out there, please come to Ontario. We're working with the federal government. We're, we're ramping up immigration as much as we possibly can. That's the federal jurisdiction. So we just, I'm, I'm hearing it absolutely everywhere I go in the province. No matter small, medium, or large companies, we need people. And the people that are healthy mind, healthy body, we need you to get out there and get gainful employment. Hey, Jamie. Hey, Mr. Premier, good morning. Right. Mr. Premier, um, electric vehicles. There used to be a rebate. one that's buying a hundred hundred plus thousand dollar yeah. electric sports car but the average family is not going to buy that 
Given the fact that uh, electric vehicles are going to become so important in Ontario's economy, given the cobalt, uh, lithium, yeah. nickel, sure. and even aluminum proximity to make the batteries, should that rebate come back? You know, something I always look at the market will bear, and you're, you're right, Jamie, before the election, I didn't believe in, in giving uh, millionaires uh, rebates on over $100,000 Tesla cars. Nothing against Tesla, they're gorgeous cars. But, you know, I'm, I just didn't believe in it. Let's see how the market dictates. We're putting billions and billions of dollars into uh, the electric vehicle market, into companies. We're partnering with the federal government, and uh, I'm going to give... Uh, uh, my minister, an opportunity to get his input on this as well. Thank you, Premier, and thank you, Jamie, for the question. Our decision was to support the supply side and put people back to work in the province of Ontario. So you'll have seen our first investment was with Ford, where we announced uh, our support for their electric vehicles. We're going to we continue to work with all of the original equipment manufacturers across Ontario to look at how the province of Ontario can support the vehicle production. Now we're shifting to the electric vehicle battery production where we choose to support that battery production. We want to put people to work. We want good, well-paying jobs for their families. And that means also that we're uh, involving the critical mineral sector from the north. So now all of Ontario will be able to uh, uh, have a, an important part of the whole uh, electric vehicle transformation. So we've opted to fund the critical minerals, the battery production, and the uh, uh, parts makers through a couple of various programs that we have. So that's where we have chosen to put our support to make sure that those cars are made here in Ontario by Ontario families right across. That's our, that was our choice of support. Thank you. Just, I, I still question whether the rebate's coming back or not to the people that need it. But anyhow, going on to my next question. Um, my next question, Brampton Hospital. There's some confusion at Brampton Hospital, how it's gonna get funded, how many beds are gonna be made. Um, the city right now is saying they're gonna have to pay most of the costs, or the, there's confusing it. What's happening with Brampton Hospital? Why isn't it just being, the, it's a hospital that's, every expert says it's needed to be built. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know who's feeding this information, Jamie, but we're building a hospital. We're building a hospital with, with beds, with emergency room, and uh, I know the Mayor Brown is quite excited about it. Not only are we building the hospital there, we're building a university, a medical university, and wouldn't that be great to have local people go to the university and then become doctors in the Brampton Hospital? I, I think there's a little bit of misinformation uh, out there because we're building a, a new hospital in the city of Brampton. Uh, so we're, we're excited. We'll be there to cut uh, the ribbon and uh, it's gonna be a brand spanking new hospital. Hi, Premier. Hi. Uh, my question has to do with hospitals as well, but our local sure. hospitals in the region of Waterloo. Um, we recently saw our local hospitals uh, either terminating or reviewing the employment status of 158 hospital staff due to their uh, joint proof of vaccination requirements. There were 158 staff members who uh, did not meet the recent deadline. I'm just curious to hear uh, your perspective on this moving forward, considering that your uh, provincial government was unwilling to put those proof of vaccination requirements in place in our local hospitals. Um, what's your perspective on that many jobs being lost to those proof of vaccination requirements? Yeah, well, it, first of all, it bothers me. and I've, I've talked to all 158 because they text me constantly. And the, these are people that work their backs off but there's, there's a policy that the hospitals have, and I just beg these people, please get vaccinated. You know, you're in the healthcare sector. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it's, it's tough. When, when 158, you're saying, uh, lost their jobs, uh, but uh, the hospital has a policy, and we aren't gonna undermine the policy. The best way to protect people and, in, in healthcare and outside is just please get vaccinated. You know, it, yeah, that, does it bother me personally that people lose it 100%? I have to listen to these stories and talk to these folks and it's, it's, it's heart-wrenching. But I beg them, please get vaccinated. I'm not gonna dictate the hospitals what they can and can't do. Uh, they, they've done a great job throughout the pandemic and uh, they're gonna continue to do a, a great job. But I encourage again, people to get vaccinated. It, it's, it's absolutely critical and we're doing I think we're doing well. We're one of the world leaders in vaccinations, and uh, we're just going to continue 
uh, getting uh, the first doses out there. As a matter of fact, the other day I saw 5,000 first doses. I think it was yesterday. I was really excited to see people are still going out there to get vaccinated. Absolutely. My uh, next question may be better suited for the minister, but it's regarding electric vehicles, a bit of a different perspective. We're seeing a sizable, uh, I'd say a, a pretty great goal, a sizable uh, investment in our sector. But when it comes to actually seeing those vehicles on the road in our province and in this community, there are sometimes concerns regarding the infrastructure for those vehicles, whether it be charging them for long distance drives. When it comes to uh, stepping up this manufacturing, can we expect any sort of similar investment in the infrastructure for these vehicles to be used here domestically? Before I pass it over uh, to the Minister, the Minister of Environment mentioned uh, sales of electric vehicles went up 200%. Well, those are really good numbers and as the market changes and the market dictates, I always say market always dictates, uh, we're going to see an increase. But I'll pass it over to the Minister. Thank you, Premier, and thank you for the question. With uh, the Ministry of Transportation, we have an Electrification Council and they are looking at the entire uh, growth of the sector, making the forecasts, and will be making the decisions based on the results from the Electrification Council. Thank you. Hi, Premier. Hi. <clears throat> you say we need bodies to fill these job openings, but with the average person being priced out of the housing market, how are you going to make housing affordable for those people who live and will locate to Ontario? Yeah, I'm a strong believer uh, in, in making affordable ownership. I'm always for affordable housing, but we need affordable ownership as well but this goes back a, a, again how the municipalities uh, that that issue the permits I, I went through that with the city of Toronto uh, some some buildings can take four to six years to, to get moving it's just it's ridiculous we have to streamline the process of getting permits out to the the builders because the builders aren't going to lose money the, the only cost that goes up it goes into the the consumer the person that's buying the house we need to streamline that and make sure that uh, we have an opportunity to get permits in, in a year opposed to four or six years. But we're working with the municipalities, sitting down and, and chatting with them and, and uh, seeing what we can do as a province to help them out uh, in, in any fashion to streamline the process. <clears throat> and as a follow-up, this is your second time in Guelph in the last week. Is this an indication you think you can pick up a seat here? Can we expect to see you here more in the next seven months? Oh, well, I'll, I'll be around the, the province, but I, you know, I give the mayor credit. This guy's a champion. He's doing a great job in uh, making it easier to do business here. And it, it's, it's very simple. If, if jurisdictions make it easier to do business, they're gonna attract great companies like Lindemar. Linda, I think you have 10,000 people. 10,000 people employed here in Guelph. Uh, we were at another facility. Uh, but to answer your question, yes, I, I think we have an opportunity in every jurisdiction in the province. We're, we're bringing jobs, we're bringing infrastructure. Uh, 413 is absolutely critical for the people of Guelph when that, once that gets built, getting goods from point A to point B in a, in a much uh, quicker fashion. So do I think we can win? Absolutely, I think we can win Guelph. I think we can win a lot of areas. Uh, because we, we've, we've changed the prov province. We're a prosperous province now. The, the economy is really moving forward thanks to the people here. And uh, we have the greatest place in the world to live, work, and, and raise a family. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, this will be the last question. Thank you. Uh, so last week, the Ontario Court of Appeal dismissed the province's arguments uh, in regards to the uh, Robinson Huron and Robinson Superior Treaties, which of course is in northern Ontario, where a lot of the minerals and things that are needed for electric vehicle batteries are mined, um, potentially leaving the province on the hook for millions or, bil millions or billions of dollars. Um, is there any plan on the province to make up for the uh, payments that haven't been increased since 1875, uh, especially as, as this plan moves forward. Yeah, that, that goes back a, a long time, obviously, and I, I would re refer that over to our Attorney General. And, and But I, I go back to our relationship uh, with the Indigenous community. It's second to none. You know, they, we, we have a phenomenal relationship with uh, First Nations communities right across the province and we're going to continue working with them and, and making sure that any exploration of, of critical minerals, that we work with them, no matter if it's forestry or mining, that we can uh, partner with them. 
But thank you, thank you for that question. And so my follow-up, I'll pass it on. Sure. Hi, Fergus. Hi, Gammy, Global News, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, across the border, President Biden's making a push to expand EV vehicles with incentives that critics say could threaten auto production here in Canada. How concerned are you about that plan and about the uh, federal government's effort in pushing to change it? Yeah, good question. This, this came up last night with the PM, with all the premiers. Uh, I'm, I'm very concerned. We're, we're again, they're, they're number one uh, trading partner. And, and why would you go after your number one ally, your number one economic partner, for, for what? It's going to hurt them just as much as it hurts us. So let's work together, and, and let's, we're, we're much stronger united than, than divided. And we're, we're doing massive numbers, not only federally, but provincially here. So I'm standing shoulder to shoulder with the Prime Minister, Team Canada, all the Premiers are. And uh, again, we faced this under the previous president. We thought things would be different uh, with this president, and hopefully they will be. Uh, after the conversation, our prime minister goes down, and, but we, we all told him, and I told him personally, we'll have your back, we'll do whatever you need to be done to make sure that, uh, that we be, be excluded from, from this, because it's absolutely ridiculous. Some, some parts will go back and forth across the border eight times before it gets assembled in Ontario here. And uh, so I, I think uh, we're going to go full tilt like uh, myself and, and the minister did. I'll be on the phone to governors. Uh, the minister has already been on the phone to a lot of his counterparts down there. But hopefully they can uh, see the forest beyond the trees. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you.